So in this video, we're going to talk about chapter one. Chapter one and chapter two are both very short. They'll fit into uh, one short video each, and then that'll be that, and we'll be done with our first two chapters already in a blink of an eye here. Chapter one is really just about the basic definitions and terminology that we're going to use in, in our statistics course. Um, these are PowerPoint slides that I'll post on Canvas, by the way. Um, so uh, in chapter one, we're going to start just talking about what are called descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics just are really just methods of organizing data. Uh, the idea with descriptive statistics is something happens, you can record all sorts of data about it, and then you want to, you know, somehow write it down, organize the data, and so on. Okay, so it's called descriptive statistics. Uh, for example, a baseball season, um, um, you would have, however, whatever your winning percentage is, batting percentage, on base percentage, uh, and so on. And once the season's over, you can look back on the season and compare uh, and contrast two different players with the number of games played, the number of hits, and so on, right? So that's descriptive statistics. And then however you choose to organize that is up to you. There's lots of ways. So we'll get into how to organize data in Chapter 2. Um, two other big definitions for us is the population versus the sample. So the population is basically everything under consideration. So I, when I think about a population and sample, I always uh, just automatically think of voting. So the population is every single person that's going to vote in, say, the 2020 presidential election. That's the entire population. And if you want to be able to guess what's going to happen, uh, which is the job of pollsters, uh, if you want to be able to guess what's going to happen, you take a sample, and that sample is just going to be some uh, part of that population, usually a pretty small set of the population, from which you can infer some sort of information about the entire population itself. Okay. That idea of inferring is actually called inferential statistics, and that's really, um, like I said, what election polling is all about. You take a sample, and then you try and figure out what does that tell us about the population. And we'll talk about lots of inferential statistics as we go along throughout the semester. Okay. Um, there's ways to get samples. Uh, again, just a little bit of terminology. There's what's called a simple random sampling. Uh, this is sometimes um, SRS. So there's a simple random sampling. And the idea with a simple random sampling is uh, this is just going to be a procedure where any one sample is equally likely. Okay, so that's a simple random sampling. And then the sample that you get is called a simple random sample. Um, sorry that the words got a little jumbled there. Uh, simple random sampling with replacement, okay, which for polls doesn't make sense, but in other contexts it does. That's also a thing. So uh, a simple random sample with replacement is, say, um, if you're playing a game where you have blue and red marbles in a bag and you want to figure out what happens when you repeatedly pick one out and you pick five out all the time and then you keep putting them back. So that with replacement, that putting them back in the, in the population or in the pot um, can change what the samples look like. So that's why it has a different name. So it's called a simple random sampling uh, with replacement. Okay. All right. So uh, there's also this chapter goes through and talks about random number generators. And this is back in the pre-computer days. So there were ways that you could use these tables to generate random numbers or seemingly random numbers. I'm not going to walk through that too much. There's a way that we can use R to generate random numbers, which I'll show you as we go along. Okay, So it's really all I wanted to say about uh, random sampling there, and we'll actually get into more details later. There's other sorts of sampling, okay? So there's what's called cluster sampling, which is where uh, what you maybe want to do is instead of thinking about the entire population and taking a simple random sampling, what you can do is you can divide the data into clusters. So again, um, one way to think about cluster sampling is if you think about the presidential election in 2020, maybe you're not going to take uh, a simple random sample and stop the first thousand people that walk by you because maybe there's some sort of bias there. Um, or for whatever reason you want to avoid that simple random sampling. A cluster sampling is where you do something like you take an entire block of houses or an entire neighborhood or an entire zip code and you kind of group all the data into different clusters like that. 
and then you can examine each cluster and then that'll tell you something about the original sample and again maybe there's a little bias there there's always some reason to do cluster sampling or simple random sampling depending on the occasion okay and then the final thing in this chapter is just about experimental designs um, and again as th this is a little bit difficult to talk about right now as we go along but the idea is that you want to in, in statistics we're always trying to fight against bias we want to make sure that we're not biasing our data in any way and experimental designs gets into how do we do that what's the way that we do that so uh, one way that's actually very useful is to have a control group and this is the idea where when you have some sort of a statistical survey um, what you want to do is you want to um, it's kind of an odd thing that maybe actually doing anything at all can have an effect so what you do is you run what's called a placebo uh, and the idea is that you give um, two groups of people different medicines one of which is actually not any medicine at all it's just sugar and then uh, you see if that actually has an effect in and of itself um, and so that's often called the control group and then you can compare the group that actually gets the medicine to the control group and that kind of helps you make sure that um, we're not really um, biasing our data in any way so that kind of gets rid of the the placebo effect there so there's again the, the treatment group and the control group the treatment group is usually the one that gets the medicine the control group is usually the one that gets the placebo okay so that's experimental designs. I don't really want to say too much more about experimental designs for now. Um, as we go through and talk about different statistical analysis tools, uh, we'll kind of revisit this idea of being as unbiased um, as we can with our data. Okay, so that's it. So that's chapter one.